is time for another book review on an obscure topic. This book is called Children of Monsters that I finished about a week or so ago by J. J. Nordlinger. This book is about um, the children of dictators and strong men. This was a book that was mentioned on a podcast called Behind the Bastards that has a lot of really good book recommendations, and I would recommend that particular podcast um, as they, they go into the history behind a lot of really horrible people. But one of their episodes focused on children of dictators and what happens with them um, many times and w what is going on a little bit in their psychology and what happens. Um, this book, very interesting because I had never heard of what had happened to half of these um, children of dictators. I'd heard of Saddam Hussein's kids just because they were so awful, and that was kind of the focal point of several people's podcasts and different things. Uh, but some of these I had not heard of, um, and, and kind of what was going on with them. Some of them, it's very interesting that they want to keep up the legacy of their parent and and what was what we see as bad they sort of particularly Mussolini's uh, family tries to keep up this legacy with him which that that situation very very interesting just because he had a mistress with another child and that interaction between that woman and his wife was was rather fascinating this it's just a book on a really kind of obscure, interesting topic. I'm not necessarily sure I like how Nordlinger writes. He has a weird style where he occasionally, not occasionally, he pretty often in there will do stuff like, well, as you well know, and it's this weird, almost conversational style that I don't know has much of a place in a book that seems to be like mini biographies to a degree. I, I'm not sure why he takes that tone or why he uses that, but he does all through here. And it's just kind of a weird informalness that I don't necessarily think has a place with this book. This this Because some of the stuff it, where he would say, well, as you well know, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, you probably don't, some of these people. This book was written back in 2015, or at least published in 2015. So we're pushing like 10 years that some of these, some of these dictators, I didn't know a whole lot about. Um, the the one in in Armenia, I believe, was one of the ones that I was didn't know much about, uh, had not heard of in a long time. Now there's your regulars um, in here, like Hussein and and um, the one in in Papa Doc and and that that group in Dominican Republic and stuff that those those that I'd heard of before but there are some kind of obscure cold war dictators that you just don't hear much about um, he goes through kind of a running list of different ones um, Mussolini of course is in here Tojo which you don't hear much about his family uh, Pol Pot which you don't hear much about his daughter um, by any means uh, Idi Amin um, Khomeini Lots of different ones that generally the children either turn out more than more often than not they turn out very much like their parent or they try to disavow it they have no interest in what their parent is doing and while they are more than willing to reap the benefits of it they themselves are not necessarily minded that way like they're not politically minded um that 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 comes in with a lot of the cold war ones uh, a lot of eastern european ones kind of interesting one of the most interesting ones and ones he one of the ones he talks about the longest in here is uh stalin's daughter svetlana she you can tell she was psychologically scarred by having the father that she had because she has this sort of love-hate relationship with the United States. She bounces back and forth with what she thinks about democracy in the United States and England and Russia. And she kind of does this weird um, 
flip floppy type thing with how she thinks about everything because you think that she she's completely disavowed her father and then she'll do something that seems like she's kind of siding with his dictatorship stuff you can tell this is a woman that was very damaged by what she lived through and i would say a lot of these many of these kids um were damaged by what they lived through in one way or another not that that excuses anything that a lot of these kids did another one of the saddest ones is um yakov which was svetlana's half brother i believe it was the it was the old the oldest son of stalin who just never could seem to do anything right to please Stalin, which was kind of a sad situation um, in all of this. And because he seems like he was not a terribly bad guy, he just was not what Stalin wanted him to be. And Stalin was ag aggressively critical of that. Now, I'm not... There. There is a... He does point out there's a weird thing with many dictators and their oldest daughter they just have this pride of their oldest daughter and just can't get enough of being the father of this oldest daughter and, and this oldest daughter can generally get away with um a lot of stuff that most people can't and it does seem to be a prevalent thing that pops up repeatedly with a lot of these dictators which is sort of interesting um that strange dynamic in all of this but it is just interesting to see how all these people ended up um, interesting to see that some of them try to break away from their family. One of Mamar Gaddafi's sons tried to do that, but then came back to the fold. And you see Svetlana kind of do that back and forth. It, it It's a weird thing. And you can tell that these people are damaged in, in multiple ways, but not enough that I would feel bad for the choices they make because they still have the choice to make some of these decisions um, that they're making that are not good in a lot of ways. And surely you can, you can see what your parent is doing. That's actually on Behind the Bastard, something that they bring up a lot with the children of these horrible people that they're talking about. They're like, surely that you, you know, they must know what they're doing, but either because of family loyalty or they're reaping the benefits of what they're, the illegality of what their parent is doing or what, or they just don't care. Um, you oftentimes see a disconnect with, with that sort of a thing. So this is an interesting book. Uh, it's a little bit dated, even though 2015 is not that bad of a copyright date. Uh, stuff happens so rapidly politically that some of these things have had a lot of stuff happen afterwards. Um, in, in different ways, particularly with Gaddafi and that situation with his, his children and some of the other ones um, that are in here, because he's writing about people who a lot of them are still alive, the, the children. But um, a very interesting book about something that you don't necessarily take into account when you're talking about dictators. I've, I've seen piles and piles and piles of articles and books and all sorts of things about these men with very, very little mention of their children a lot of times and what's happening there. And I find that psychologically more interesting a lot of times than what the men were doing, um, basically because it's what, what were the, ch how did the children sort of see it? And some of these men were monsters the whole way through. And, and were monsters to their children as well. Uh, some of them were very indulgent fathers, and that's a weird disconnect too, that you've got somebody who is, who is murdering people right and left, but is also a good, honest family man in some ways. Um, it's just very, very odd. So I would suggest reading this book. It is, to me, it was a fast read. I read it pretty quickly because it was very, very interesting. And all this information he's dug up on these different children and what they've done and where they've gone. The, the, the weirdest thing is sort of his tone of writing, um, like I said, which is just kind of an odd form, format that he is, he is the tone he takes when he writes. is a little bit weird. But um, 
other than that, this is very, very readable, very interesting, and an interesting way to look at dictators through their children.